We're going to introduce this idea of recursive estimation of acoustic impedance and we discussed previously basic relationships between the seismic uh, signal observed in the stack trace, the wavelet, and the reflectivity sequence. And we defined this uh, reflectivity in, you know, using this notation here where this would be the reflection coefficient between layers I and J, R sub I J, rho J and V J would be the density and uh, interval velocity in layer J, rho sub I and V sub I would be the interval uh, would be the density and interval velocity in layer I, and so we have a difference of these products here, rho sub J times V sub J is the acoustic impedance in layer J, which we represent, uh, often represent by a Z, so BZJ, and then this would be the acoustic impedance in the overlying layer, which we represent by Z sub I, and we're just taking the difference Z sub J minus Z sub I, and in the denominator here we have uh, rho sub I V sub I plus rho sub J V sub J, which is just the sum of the two impedances, which we can think of also as twice the average, which we talked about uh, previously. And uh, again, you know, thinking in terms of the reflection coefficient, we can also think of the reflection coefficient between these two layers as the ratio of the amplitude of the reflected wave over that of the incident wave. Now in this expression here, um, we, one of our goals is to estimate what Z sub J is for any particular uh, layer, so we algebraically uh, should be able to estimate z sub j from z sub i. So z sub j then should be some function of um, z sub i all the way back to uh, the impedance of the upper layer. Now <clears throat> just to keep in mind our previous discussions and the objective that we've been working towards in, in some of our videos here. We've talked about a lot of these different uh, AVO representations. Uh, here we've got the another representation. Uh, instead of a little R, we've got a capital R. PP indicates that we're looking at the reflected compressional wave, incident compressional wave, reflected compressional wave. And we're looking at its variation as a function of the incidence angle. And we have this uh, expression over here, which we talked about in a previous video. So this term, uh, delta I sub P over 2 I sub P, these I's are impedances, which we have just been writing as Z's. And the P indicates that this is, a, this is the um, compressional wave acoustic impedance. So, Delta I sub P then can be written as Z2 minus Z1, where we're using the notation, symbolic notation, symbol Z in order to represent the acoustic impedance. So we've got the difference here. And we could also be rewriting this as Z sub J minus Z sub I. Uh, again, for compressional waves. And this I sub P is the average compressional wave acoustic impedance, so Z sub I plus Z sub J over 2. And um, so 2 times I sub P that we see in the denominator up here would be 2 times Z sub I plus Z sub J over 2, which is just Z sub I plus Z sub J. So terms like this, delta I sub P over 2 I sub P, would be the, re the P wave reflection coefficient. And um, <clears throat> so we're getting estimates of the P wave reflection coefficient at each offset. We talked about uh, coming up with the inversion of these uh, coefficients that we have here, these complicated looking coefficients, um, in order to determine what these um, R sub P, R sub S, and uh, R sub D are. So the above, um, this expression up here can also be written, rewritten uh, in this form where we let the term like uh, delta I sub P over 2 I sub P equal R sub P or R sub A I. 
and uh, R sub SI, this would be shear wave imp uh, impedance, the ref reflection coefficient associated with the shear waves, and uh, so on. <clears throat> so in these different AVO representations, we've got these different terms, and, and you'll see lots of different representations and different uh, symbolic notation. And you just need to, as always, kind of pay attention to the um, to to the um, to, you know what's being specified in the paper that you're reading. So uh, this AI, for example, is often used as uh, acoustic impedance. So when you see AI by itself, that would be usually thought of as the compressional wave acoustic impedance. And SI would be thought of as the shear wave acoustic impedance. And we should be able to derive these acoustic impedances from the reflection coefficients. And that's our objective. So you're going to see this different note, different notations, E sub P or I sub P for the impedances, the compressional wave impedance. And in the following discussions, we're just going to use uh, Zs for the impedances as we have in, in the uh, recent slide. <clears throat> so coming back to the basic definition for the reflection coefficient between layers I and J, we just have this difference of acoustic impedance over the sum of the two impedances. It would be Z sub J minus E sub I over Z sub I plus E sub J. And we can work with these with this basic definition here in order to determine a quantity 1 plus R sub I J. And we can do that just by adding 1. This is Z sub I plus Z sub J over Z sub I plus Z sub J. Plus, we have R sub I J, which is Z sub J minus Z sub I over Z sub I plus Z sub J. And this is equal to 2 times Z sub J, just going through the algebra, over Z sub I plus Z sub J. <clears throat> Likewise, for 1 minus R sub I J, we've got 1 again, but we've got a minus sign here in front of the... Uh, expression for R sub i j, and this gives us a 2 z sub i over z sub i plus z sub j. So if we take the ratio of these two uh, quantities, 1 plus R sub i j over 1 minus R sub i j, this is just z sub j over z sub i. <clears throat> and looking at, um, you know, two layers specifically, we could rewrite this as z2. This would be the impedance in, let's say, an underlying layer, or the jth layer, or the second layer, could be expressed as Z1, or Z sub i, times 1 plus R sub i j over 1 minus R sub i j, which in this case would be 1 plus R1, 2 over 1 minus R1, 2. <clears throat> now, we could simplify this notation and just write R1, 2 as R1, this would be the reflection coefficient um, of the interface at the interface between layers 1 and 2, and we just drop the 2 here. So we know that R1 has uh, a layer above and a layer below. The layer above is the first layer. So Z2 then could be equal to Z1 times 1 plus R1 over 1 minus R1. Now this is a good uh, reference here. And these references have been noted in the slides, and I haven't necessarily pointed them out, but uh, uh, Russell 1988 has a, um, a good SEG course notes that, that go through some of the details here. Now, so we, we, can, we can start off with this approach here, and you can see that it's, in order to keep going, it's necessary to have some informa information about what the impedance is at the surface in the first layer. So if we want to do something like this, which is figure out what Z3 is, the impedance in the third layer, we've got Z2 times 1 plus R2 over 1 minus R2, which is equal to Z1 times 1 plus R1 over 1 minus R1 times 1 plus R2 over 1 minus R2. This uh, Z2 here is we defined over here. So the information on the reflectivity comes from amplitudes of the seismic trace, sample by sample. And you can see that uh, if we continue this process here, uh, which is referred to as kind of a recursive inversion, we can get the impedance in the nth layer is equal to the impedance in the first layer times the product 
of all these uh, all these ratios and um, and just you know this pi just uh, represents taking the product of all these uh, one plus r sub i's over one minus r sub i as i goes from one to n minus uh, n minus one. So um, we've got this basic representation of the seismic trace. That we're developing a synthetic seismogram. We've got our reflectivity sequence, which is derived from the impedances. And then we noted that the wavelet is reflected from each one, each reflection coefficient, and that it's the amplitude of the reflection is scaled by the amplitude of the reflection coefficient. So the amplitude of this reflection event is equal to or proportional to this reflection coefficient, likewise for this one. And we've actually reverse the polarity or reverse the sign. This wavelet um, starts off in the negative direction as it's reflected from this negative reflection coefficient and so on. Positive, a much larger reflection coefficient. The amplitude of the reflected wavelet is higher. And we're basically getting information about the reflectivity from these amplitudes in the seismic trace. And this would be our synthetic, which is just a superposition Remember, this is an integral, so we're really summing everything together in order to get this um, synthetic. This is just a summation of, uh, of this uh, convolution operation. And so our task at this point, or the problem that we're addressing, addressing is, uh, you know, we're, we want to get the acoustic impedances. Uh, we did note that we do need some information about the acoustic impedance in the uppermost layer, some way of estimating that or approximating it. And if we can do that, then we can estimate Z2 in terms of Z1 and the reflection coefficient, which can be estimated from the seismic amplitudes. And so this is an approximation, of course. And so the next time we'll, uh, we're going to kind of continue developing these ideas of approximating um, the acoustic impedances. Remember again, these acoustic impedances are, um, it's kind of our goal to find out what these impedances are because we can express other parameters such as Lamé's parameters, lambda, uh, mu, and rho, uh, mu, in terms of these acoustic impedances which are derived from the AVO responses. So we'll Next time we'll take a look at this uh, in terms of a Taylor series expansion and uh, keep in mind that we're kind of working, uh, working back to from the impedance, acoustic impedance in the nth layer uh, in terms of the acoustic impedance in the upper layer times a series of products here, 1 plus r sub i over 1 minus r sub i. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, Taylor series representation of, uh, of these uh, ideas in the next video. Thanks for joining us and uh, see you next time.